Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jimmy. I just wanted to show you guys a few things with the Samsung Galaxy S3. Um, I will be showing you guys probably about 15 to 16 different things that is involving this phone that you will definitely want to know so you can enjoy your device as much as possible. The first thing that I'm going to show you is from the lock screen here. You can actually do a quick access to your camera. Press and hold on the lock screen, turn into landscape mode, and then go straight into your camera. Um, last time I was in my camera, I had it set to the camera mode, um, or the video mode to the camera, and now it's in camera. So just so you guys know, whatever you guys had it in, whichever function, that's what it will open it up to. The other thing is that you can actually set a voice command. And where you can set both of these up is underneath settings, you go into your security, and then underneath security, go to your lock screen options. And then from here, you can turn on your quick access camera, or camera quick access. You can turn it on or off. You have to make sure you turn up, um, check mark the wake up and lock screen. And then you can also set up a command. So I do have a few that's set up, um, which I can have one that would open up my camera as well as one that unlocks my screen. But that one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, in the lock screen, you just say unlock or whatever you set your command to do for that function. Now the other thing you can do is you can swipe your screen to take a screen capture. So just swipe the screen just like that and then you took a screen screenshot. Or you can press and hold on the home and the power button. And there you go, now you just took two screenshots. Both of them will be saved underneath your gallery in your screenshots, which is right here. Now, another one I'm going to show you is called S-Beam. This is why I wanted to wait till I got two different devices. When you do your S-Beam, what you're doing is you are transferring content up to one gig of data from one device to the other device. And those devices have to be Galaxy S3s at this moment in time. Now, when you use S-Beam, you use two different types of technologies. You'll be using NFC and you'll be using Wi-Fi Direct. So first off, let me show you this photo. I'm transferring this picture over to the other device. And as you saw, the picture did get small, and that just means it's ready to beam over. And now that it's connecting, what it's doing is NFC is a technology that is basically the handshake saying, hey, I'm going to be giving you something. And then Wi-Fi Direct is the other technology, which is why it took um, up to about 10 seconds before it even sent it. Uh, Wi-Fi Direct is setting its own peer-to-peer -peer connectivity setting up its own small Wi-Fi signal. And so that is how S-Beam works. And just so you know, on a side note for Wi-Fi Direct, you can be up to 200 feet away for Wi-Fi Direct to work. So if I had a photo in my album, I can do a Wi-Fi Direct, any of my photos to this other device, up to 200 feet away. Now the next thing that I'm gonna show you is something referred to as Smart Stay. Um, and how you turn it on is you go underneath your menu, your settings, you go to Display, and here is your smart stay, it's right there. And as you can tell, my screen is supposed to turn off after 15 seconds of inactivity. But as you can tell, the screen is actually still on. And I'll show you why. If you look up in the status bar, you're gonna see that a small, tiny eyeball pops up for a second, and then it disappears. That eyeball is still noticing and recognizing through the front-facing camera that you're still looking at the screen, making sure that it will stay on for you so you can keep reading all of your content, um, watching a video, looking at a picture, whatever the case may be, it will always stay on as long as you're actively looking at the screen. Um, if you were to look away, set the phone down, or close your eyes, the screen will turn off. Now, another thing that is really cool is something that's referred to as direct call. Direct call is you open it up through your settings, you go to motion, and then direct call is on the very top underneath motion activation. You gotta make sure you, you check mark this in order for all of your motions to work if you have them toggled to be on. Direct call, what this does is, let's say that I'm looking at a message thread. Um, I can't really show you because I'm gonna take the phone away from the camera, but if I'm looking at this message thread right here, if I was to put this phone up to my face, um, up to my ear, it will call this person directly. Or if you're looking at that person's contact information, and you're looking at their contact card, if you put this up to your ear, it will call them as well, using all the accelerometers and light sensors and gyroscopes and things like that. Um, because it knows, you know, going from the X, Y, and Z axes, it knows that it moved up and over and turned a little bit. Now, underneath the camera, here's a couple things that I can show you. And I'll take a beautiful photo of 
I guess my other Galaxy S3 here. So let's say I want to take a picture of this. You go underneath your shooting mode, go to burst shot, and then underneath here you can take up to 20 different photos. So you see the 20 on the very bottom right hand side. And so you can just take all the way up to 20 if you'd like to. The toggle on the upper left hand corner is for best shot. Best shot takes eight photos. And once you hit once you hit the the camera button, it will take the eight automatically for you without pressing and holding it. And then out of the eight photos, it will find the best one for you. Um, as you can tell, that one in the almost center there, uh, that is the best one with that thumbs up. Let's say there's another one I like as well. Just put two thumbs up there. Let's hit done. And then once you hit done, it saved the two photos and then it scrapped the other six. When you're in your video, um, once you start hitting record, you have a camera button right above it. You can hit the camera button function there, and now you just took another picture of whatever you're recording. Just so you know, if for some reason there is a photo that you really extremely want, um, and you forgot to get it as it's recording, let's say that you want to take a picture of what you see here right now, just put it in landscape mode, swipe your hand across landscape mode, take a screen capture or a screenshot, and now you have whatever is there. So if, you're, if you have a, a little one that's running around, um, and you got them on video and you wanted a picture of it, now you, can, now you can have a picture of it. Now the next thing I like to show you guys is something referred to as POP video, which is picture on picture. Um, let's go into the video player. Underneath the video player, let's say I grab a video that I recorded when I was in the store when I first grabbed this phone here. Um, once you hit play and you're watching it, let's say somebody messaged you on Facebook. Um, hit the very bottom right hand side where this icon's at. And then now you have picture on picture that you can move this anywhere you'd like to. You can go onto your browser. You can put it in landscape mode if needed. And then now you still have this video that you can move it anywhere you'd like. Now you can now you can mute and pause it by putting your hand over the screen. Click it to play again. Click it to open up the screen one more size bigger. And then you pause and then you can get out of it. And so that is the POP and also putting your palm over it to mute. That is a motion that you do have to turn on in order for it to work. Another motion is once you go underneath your settings, you go to motion, there's one referred to as turn over to mute. So let's say you're in a meeting and someone calls you and you're disrupting the, the room. Just place it upside down and then it mutes. So this one is extremely handy for you guys. Another one is tap to top. I won't go through all these, but just play around with them. Once you click on these, um, you can learn about tap the top on what it does um, and all the other all the rest. So let's say I'm looking at, um, I don't know, my friend Wesley and I want to go talk to Abby. Double tap on the top of the phone and it goes to the very top of the phone. And that is how a couple of those. Alright, another thing I like to show here is underneath the text messaging. When you go into your text messages, let's say that I'm looking at one here um, and if you press and hold on this icon down here where the microphone is. If you press and hold, it turns into four different ones. One of them is clipboard. The second one in is where you can type your letters or words, or you can have your settings button. And so now, once you let go of it, now it shows the settings icon on the bottom, but I like to have the microphone so you can speak into it, and it's gonna be voice recognition. Um, and it's trying to lis listen to me right now. <laughs> um, but I'm too far away from the screen or the microphone because I'm talking into this camera, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Okay, anyways, um, something else you could do as you are speaking into your phone is you can actually pronounce all the punctuation. So let me try it here. Um, hey, my name is Jimmy, comma, how is it going, question mark. And there you go. So now it has how is it going, and it's actually going to keep going until you hit stop. So that's another way if you're if you're driving and you have to send a fast text, um, you can speak into your phone by putting that microphone on the extreme um, very bottom. Um, when you press and hold on your home button here, it takes you into your task manager in the previous apps that you've used. Let's say I want to go into my Pandora extremely fast. Here we go, and now I got my my Breathe Carolina. If I wanted to listen to that, um, something else that you can do is when you press and hold on it. 
you can also get rid of these and get and so then this way they're not running in the background taking up any of your ram which does this does have two gigs of ram which is amazing um and then it has you know the 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor in here in the u.s and just so you know the reason why it's not quad core is because it is not compatible with our processors that we have on in the u.s with the um you know 4g lte that's over over here um, underneath your phone, you do have some settings. So remember, if you're looking through your dial pad, press your menu button, go to call settings, and you can change things such as use extra volume for calls or increase the volume if the phone is in your pocket. So this is just something else that you guys can look at too. Um, if you have the dots, um, which all, all the phones will, you press and hold and you can scroll quickly between all of your screens. And either you can do the pinch to zoom or you can use two fingers that you can swipe. Um, in any direction you can add all of your screens up to seven and you can dedicate one of these to your home right now the extreme left one in the middle row is my home if I want to I can create this one right here to be my home but I don't so I'm gonna keep it as this right here um, now a couple short codes that you guys can do through the dial pad is if you want to find your IMEI or MEID really quick just do star pound zero six pound so this is if you're gonna be rooting your phone or whatever the case or if you're a big marketing company that needs to activate 50 phones in one day here you go it's the fast way to find out your information the other thing is the LCD test on Samsung star pound zero star pound once you go in here you can test out your greens your reds your blues you can test out your dimming make sure that it, it dims correctly you double press on the back button, gives you back over here. You test your, your, your sensor, so you can see your accelerometer, proximity sensor, the barometer, light sensor, gyroscope, magnetic sensor for your GPS. So if you feel something's not working, you can figure it out this way. Again, um, this is only for Samsung devices on the Galaxy S2, Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, um, on Sprint, the 4G Epic, or the Epic 4G Touch, um, the Galaxy Note that is on AT&T and then all of the Galaxy S3s does this as well. Um, now this is pretty much all that I have for, for today. Uh, if I have anything else coming up in the near future, I will make a response video. And if you guys have anything that you guys want me to elaborate on, um, go for it uh, and write on this video. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope you guys have learned something on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Um, have a great day.